One of the first steps to getting ready to take the MCAT is knowing when you're going to take the MCAT. And just like there's a strategy for how you should take the MCAT and kind of what you need to do to study or to actually take the test, there's a strategy for when you want to take your test. And so that's what we're going to cover in this video today is really when should you take the MCAT based on your own situation. To start with, the MCAT is offered several times throughout the year, first in January, then through March through September, with the majority of dates falling between May and August. And so this means if you're planning on taking an MCAT in August, November, or December, there are no dates for that. So really be aware of that because you don't want to make your plan around taking it in the middle of the fall and then you realize not only are there not any dates, but it's kind of an isolated time and there's not a close test date. So really pay attention to when the MCAT is actually offered. The other thing you have to think about is when you want to start medical school because the MCAT is not something you can just take and apply to medical school. You really have to be thinking about when you take your MCAT, you're going to be applying about a year and a half out. So for instance, if you want to start school in the fall of 2020, medical school in the fall of 2022, um, then you need to go back a year and a half. So your MCAT needs to be done by the spring of 2021. And that way you can apply over the summer of 2021, do all your interviews throughout the fall and spring of 2021 going into 2022, and then start medical school in fall of 2022. So this really takes some foresight into kind of when you want to plan your test and you have to be very strategic based on where you're at in your background, content, knowledge, studying, and where you want to be in regards to when you want to start medical school. So to help you plan, I'm going to go through a couple of common scenarios that people may fall into. So the first one is the traditional pre-med. And if you're the very traditional pre-med, you're going to want to start medical school as soon as you finish on your undergraduate degree with maybe only the summer off. So if you're that student, your MCAT needs to be done by either the summer between sophomore and junior year or in the spring of junior year. And this way, everything is done by the time you finish your junior year, you're able to apply to medical school over junior year, do your interviews through senior year, and then start medical school as soon as you finish your undergraduate degree. The Another scenario is the kind of in-between non-traditional traditional student. And these are the students who are going to take a gap year or even two, um, but are still kind of studying while they're in school. And this kind of is a unique situation because you have to still study like you're in school, but then you end up with all this time off. So you want to look again to when you want to start medical school and then plan accordingly when to take your MCAT. For instance, I knew I was going to have to take a gap year, so I took my MCAT in the spring of my senior year, applied during my year off, and then start med school in the fall a year and a half later. So you kind of want to again be cognizant of what does your application look like over the next year and a half. And finally, there's the non-traditional student. And non-traditional students actually probably have the most flexibility in when to take the MCAT because they're not really constrained as much by the academic schedule. So what I would recommend if you're a non-traditional student is look at your workload and be cognizant if you have a specific time of year that you have more work, probably not a good time to take the MCAT. For instance, if you're an accountant, you probably don't need to take the MCAT between January and April because you're just going to be slammed. Instead, you want to be looking towards the later summer dates. So being aware of that is what, if you're a non-traditional student, kind of what you want to be paying attention to. But again, you really have more flexibility in terms of when do you take the test because you're not constrained by this traditional school kind of timeline. If you're a non-traditional student, a good time of year to kind of be looking for if you really don't know when to take the test is January because that gives you kind of all of September to December into mid-January, the earliest test dates mid-January and late January. So you can study all of that and then take the test. And if for some reason you have to retake the test, you still have another four months where you can study and take the test again in April or May. So this is a really good option if you're kind of not sure what to do and you're a non-traditional student. However, I caution most students to um, with like taking the test in January because this can cause a couple problems. For starters, you take the test in January, um, you have this time period in the fall that you have to be studying. And the problem with this is it's people's first semester back, they have to get back in the groove after summer, um, the holidays roll around and it's really difficult to study around the holidays because people are coming into town, people are going out of town, and it's really hard to keep up. And so what a lot of students run into is that they plan on taking the test in January, but things just fall apart right around Thanksgiving break because they just aren't able to kind of commit to the studying. And I had a similar situation. I was originally going to take my test in January and I found the same thing to be true. It was just too much. And by the time I got to winter break, I didn't want to study. 
And with the old MCAT, it was possible to study for several weeks, take the test and move on and do really well. But with this new MCAT, unless you have a very, very solid foundation in the sciences and the strategy, it's a lot harder to take the test and do well in such a short period of time. There are some benefits, however, if you do want to take the test in January and you feel confident that you can commit very much time to studying and like making sure you're going to be okay and that you can do this time frame. Um, some benefits that you're going to run into are that one, you get the test out of the way. So it's done in January. You don't have to worry about it. You get your score back. You can move on. Two, if something happens, you're actually able to retake the test and it doesn't mess up your whole application cycle versus a late summer test date, you may have to postpone again. So being able to take it in January, you didn't do well, you can retake it in April or May. That is a really big plus for a lot of people. The other thing is that if you take it in January, you'll have your score by February. That frees up several months for you to work on your application and be able to write essays, fill out your AMCATs, go ahead and pre-write some secondaries, get your letters of recommendation, a lot of time to work on your application, which can be a benefit if you really need that extra time and aren't going to be able to commit more time closer to when the application is due. So if you feel certain you can commit to the time frame of January, there are benefits to it. And of course, another situation that I just kind of alluded to is that you get to a September test date and for some reason you have to postpone. January is the next available test date. So again, that may be a good option for you, especially if you have the solid content, you're gonna be able to kind of roll into the January test date and really focus over the fall months on the strategy behind the test. And of course, we focus a lot on strategy at MCAT Mastery. So if you feel like that's where you're really struggling, reach out to our tutors or get our strategy guide to really help you kind of solidify that so that you can make the best of that January test date. So then I have two additional kind of testing date scenarios to help you decide a little bit more when you want to take the test. A great time of year to take the test is in April, and this is actually what I did, and I was really happy with the April test date, especially compared to my previous January test date. I thought I was going to take it, and I postponed too. April is great because you get your score back in May, and AMCAS opens in early June. So you will have your score back before you apply, and you also have plenty of time to spend in May working on that application. For a lot of students, April is also kind of between midterms and finals. So for me, I finished my midterms like in February and early March, and then I didn't have finals until the end of April. So I took my test in early April, was really able to dedicate like most of March to that test. And then afterwards, I had a whole month almost to kind of work on pulling my grades up, making sure I was doing really well on my finals to kind of make up for all the studying I was focusing on the MCAT during the semester. So April for a student taking it in the spring semester is a really great option of when to take the test date. The other date that is really great are for students who are taking their test in the summer, a August of the year before is really good. For instance, if you're a traditional student and want to apply straight out August between sophomore and junior year, if you're going to take a gap year August between junior and senior year. This is a really good time of year because you can take the test, you'll have your score back either early September or if you take it late July, early August, kind of the end of the month. And if for some reason you need to retake, you can take it the next month if you got sick on test date, had a family emergency, all these little things that pop up, it gives you one more option to take the test so that you're not taking the test in September and then you have to wait until January and kind of lose all your momentum. The other benefit is that you have it done out of the summer and a lot of students have less commitments in the summer. So it just gives you a little more time to kind of study and get things done and not have to worry about all the extras that go into preparing for the MCAT and you can instead just focus on the MCAT itself. You may be thinking now that you kind of have an idea of when you want to take the test or you may even have in mind a test date already. And so the one question I really want you to ask yourself is, will I be ready for the test come the test date I have picked? And this is a really important question to be extremely honest with yourself. And so much of doing well in the MCAT is being honest with yourself and where you're at. And you need to look at all the things in your life, not just the MCAT. You need to look at extracurriculars, family commitments, you know, what you have planned, trips you have planned, things like that. All of these things take time away from MCAT studying, and that's not a bad thing. You want to have a well-balanced life. However, you need to give yourself enough time that you can dedicate to studying to really do well on the test. And so that's not to say this isn't possible. I studied with a very full plate and still did well on my MCAT. It wasn't an issue. But you also have to make sacrifices and be prepared that the MCAT is going to take up a lot of your time. And if you're not ready to kind of commit, you don't want to plan your test date around that. And you need to give yourself ample time. If things do pop up, you're not down to the wire and just running out of time. 
So really focus when you're planning on your MCAT test date at looking at the big picture, where everything is, and then kind of narrow down into your test date based on your commitments, your goals, and kind of where you want to be in the next year and a half and where you see yourself studying for the next couple months. For a lot of students, having somebody there to help them and kind of hold them accountable is also really beneficial. So if you feel like you need um, that additional accountability just to have someone there who you can check in with or who will kind of hold you accountable, also talk to our tutors because they're great at making sure that you're able to kind of not get lost or like lose focus and checking in and saying, hey, did you get X, Y, and Z done? And that can be really helpful too when you have a lot of things going on to just have that extra support. All of that to say, that taking the MCAT and when you take the MCAT is very strategic. So make sure you understand kind of the things that go into picking the right test date for you so that you can take the MCAT once or once more if you're a retaker and then be done. And one final tip about the MCAT is that you wanna make sure, or registering for the MCAT, is that you wanna make sure you register early. And a situation a lot of students get into is that they register, then they have to change their date because they weren't ready, so then they have to register again, change their date. This is a problem for two reasons. One, it's really expensive to just change your date around a lot, so you want to kind of minimize that. But two, a lot of times if you're having to pick your date really close to the deadline, you're not going to have your preferred spot and you may end up having to drive to a location or fly to a location, all of those kind of things. And that can really mess with your mindset. So make sure you put yourself in the best position to do well on the test by being in a place you're comfortable, that you know where it's at, it's in your preferred location, and that's done by registering early. So make sure that you focus on that too. And again, it's all these little pieces that go into picking the right MCAT date for you that can make the difference on your test day score and on how you do and really just on your motivation and mindset in general.